A bee represents a haughty spirit. It is prideful. To have a haughty spirit is to have an air of supremacy about you. Bees fall from the air to take nectar from flowers or crowns of pride and turn it into honey, which means pride. Bees are black, which represents impurity, and yellow, which represents the vice of pride. Beehives are built in a tree branch or a person. Bees sting to protect the hive. Proverbs 16:18. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Bees' wax represents disgrace, used to construct the combs in which the bees raise their brood. Waxes are insoluble in water or soul. From Psalms 68, 2. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melteth before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. Psalms 97, 5. The hills, or cities, melted, or succumbed, like wax, or disgrace, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. Natural waxes are typically compounds of fatty acids, which would symbolically represent rich resentment. Attached to lung-chain alcohols, which represent perverse soul. Wax needs heat or passion to melt or succumb. Melted wax behaves much the same way as oil or grace. Psalms 22.14 I am poured out like water or soul, and all my bones or values are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It has melted in the midst of my bowels, or instincts. A beehive represents a proud heart. A branch represents a person, and a honey represents pride. As a beehive hangs off a branch, the more honey within the beehive, the lower the branch hangs. From Proverbs 29.23, A man's pride shall bring him low. Proverbs 28.25, He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. Now what's even more amazing with this is that the structure of the honeycomb is the same structure as carbon atoms. Carbon represents selfishness, as shown with coal. I've added a clip here of a zoom in of some carbon fiber, so you can see exactly firsthand how complicated this language is that God has formed. It is symbols within symbols within symbols. A moth represents a lust spirit. It is nocturnal, attracted to flames, eats garments, which means accounts, as to cause nakedness or to bear sin. This represents renouncing or criticizing God. Matthew 6.19 Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where the moth and rust does corrupt. Psalms 39.11 When thou with rebukes does correct man for iniquity, Thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Butterfly represents free spirit. Butterflies expose their wings, or wisdom, to the sun, which means Jesus, in order to build up enough heat, or passion, before takeoff. Flowers, or the crown of pride, attract butterflies. Transformation from caterpillar into a butterfly provides the model for death, burial, and resurrection. This represents the born-again Christian. A locust represents a thief. Proverbs 30.27 The locusts have no king, yet go they forth all of them by bands. Joel 2.9 They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. A scorpion represents a robber. Revelation 9, 5 But that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Fly represents a guilty spirit, born from rotten flesh or ethics. Lifespan of one to two months, eats poo or rejected works. Attracted to wounds or strife, Guilt is like a fly, it keeps buzzing around until we deal with it. Remember that Beelzebub is called the Lord of the Flies. Ezekiel 10.1 1. 
dead flies cause the ointment of apothecary to send forth a stinking savour. So does a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honour. A spider represents a shear or a fortune teller. Its web represents stories. The shear spins her spindle and weaves an incredible tale that enraptures people, makes a web between two branches or two people. Many eyes, venomous things, its web of lies catches flies or people's guilty spirit. It feeds on people's guilt. Proverbs 30.28 The spider taketh hold with her hands, and is in king's palaces. Job 8.14 Whose hope shall be cut off, and whose trust shall be a spider's web. A frog represents a blasphemer. Revelation 16.13 And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world. Psalm 78.45 He sent diverse sorts of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs which destroyed them. The frog has extremely toxic skin or bitter integrity. Any animal that would put the frog in its mouth or its mind would die from toxicity or bitterness. The frog eats or accepts people's guilt or flies with its speech or tongue, sits on a swamp rush or false prophet. Psalms 10.5 His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Unto his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places does he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. A serpent represents a rebel. Snakes move on their belly or manner upon the dirt or transgression and forever eat, or accepts, dust, or defiance. Snakes and reptiles are cold-blooded. They are dispassionate. They have toxic or hating teeth or values. A snake is basically a head or authority attached to a tail, which means subversion. Genesis 3.14 And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. The O represents the Ouroboros. It means the eternal return of the serpent. 101 is the Ouroboros between the two pillars of polarity. The serpent's head, or authority, eats or accepts its own tail, or subversion, thus eternally corrupting itself.